four. <laughs> Yay. Okay, guys, so I wanted to start this morning with a gentle heart opener. And then later towards the end of class, just end in two restoratives. And it's challenging for me to do the restorative without you here, without the props. But I've been trying to think of a couple of different ways to do that. So if we have a blanket and a block, we can do a few of those poses. So for the first pose, I want to start with a heart opener. And there's a couple of different options to do that. Uh, depending on your flexibility, right, and how comfortable you are arching, it may be as simple as taking a blanket and just having it folded. So this is, you know, the threefold where you go fringe to fringe and then you do like an accordion and then placing it the long way across the mat. And don't do it yet because I want to show you guys the other option. Bending the knees, coming down, and the shoulders come off. And it creates this little lift to the heart. Right? And we bend the knees to release the lower back. Maybe let the knees rest on top of each other. If you have anything holding the hair up, you want to move that. The second option would be to take a, bl a block and a blanket or two blocks. And they go on the lowest height. So one is like midway down the mat and the other one is up here. This is going to support the head. This is going to support the spine. Some people may find that this one is a little too intense and you want to leave about eight to 10 inches coming down. That depends on how long the torso is. And again, the shoulders are free to fall back and this supports the head. Knees bent, right? They can come in, rest on each other, arms up. So take a moment and play with those two options and see what would feel best. You know, for some that, that very small lift, but the important thing is it's for the heart. So the, if we're using the blanket, it would fall just under like the bra line or just above the bra line, right? So the shoulders can relax down and take a few breaths, a few moments to get into it. And I'll try and see from here, once everybody is down, you know, and take your time. It's really important to settle in here so that you can stay just for a few moments. So I pulled a card this morning for you guys. For those of you who practice with me on Saturday mornings or practiced with me on Saturday mornings, that was just something we did. I would just pull these cards and leave them under the mat. So the card I pulled is, it is very important to know who you are, to make decisions to show who you are. And pretty fitting for the theme of this morning's practice, which is freedom. Right? So there's nothing more freeing than becoming or being your authentic self. And what sets Kripalu Yoga apart from some of the other styles of yoga is that this idea of compassionate self-study, right? self-awareness with compassion. So the postures are not the goal. The postures become a vehicle an inquiry as we come in and out of different postures. And maybe you're finding this morning that this heart opener that we're starting in is a little challenging, right? It's definitely different than the way we start. And we notice our reactions and we try not to judge because self-judgment, as Swami Kripalu says, every time you judge yourself, you break your own heart. Right? Just allowing whatever it is to come up and examine the emotions, examine the feelings, and then use the breath and see if we can breathe through it. And the whole time we're doing this, we establish these new patterns. Because up until this point, without that self-study, we're on automatic. Right? Yoga gives us that pause. Can we take that step back before we speak, before we react to think about 
what's the reaction and where is it coming from? So many times our reactions are just habit from years and years ago and maybe, maybe they don't serve us. Right. So patterns of self-criticism are seductive and create a deep internal divide between the parts of the self we promote and those that we lock up and hide away. Embracing all aspects of who we are can allow us to rediscover that there is more than just one way to live a worthy life. So focus on freedom freedom to be who we are, our best version of ourselves. Let's start to deepen the breath and place the feet on the mat, press down, lift the hips and then press the hips away from you just to give you a little more length on the back. And notice as you breathe in, when we are in this gentle back bend, that it's a little bit easy, easier to take that full deep breath and just Focus on the natural breath this morning, right? Focusing on exactly the way we are. We're not going to change anything. We're not going to move into any specific pranayam. Just noticing the breath as it comes in and out of the body. And that next breath right there, can you feel it as it travels down the throat? Feeling the expansion on the inhale and that sweet surrender on the exhale. Feeling the belly fill, the ribs expand, the heart lift. And on the exhale, how everything comes back together. This little rhythm of the breath, constant, always with us. And just taking a few moments here, check in on the physical body. Any areas of tightness, maybe you woke up with a stiff neck, whatever that is as we move through the practice, making sure you take care of yourself. And also bring your attention to your reaction to starting this way this morning. And sometimes in our practice, we'll come into a pose that we're not crazy about. And this becomes the tool. Can we breathe? Can we stay with it? Can we watch those emotions, those judgments, as if we're watching a movie, right, without reacting? And just taking a few more breaths here. And as we prepare for class, I just want to share a little quote by Mary Ann Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So letting those words resonate. And then to come off of this, simply rolling off to one side, right? And find yourself in a side resting pose, a fetal position, just for a breath or two. And then gently bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. We'll continue with heart opening today. And like I said, we'll end with some restorative practices. So take a moment and just drop the chin to the chest. As we come into our comfortable seat, press the hips into the mat, and then see if we can find this length in the spine. So even though the chin is down, we're gonna lengthen the spine, take the shoulders, roll them down and back, and the elbows come in towards the waist, turn the palms up. And take a deep breath here. On the exhalation, let that chin lift and the eyes open. If they were closed, sweep the arms out to the side. Begin to sweep those arms out and all the way up. Let the head drop back here. And then reach up, left hand to the right side, right hand to the left, and find this lengthening as we come from side to side. 
Notice how the side body showed up this morning. Let's come through center and flip the palms. And as we exhale, shoulders are down. We're gonna flutter the fingers like confetti and let the chin drop to the chest, letting the fingers come alongside the body. And then immediately inhale, sweep the palms up and let the head drop. And exhale, reversing, maybe fluttering those fingers, chin to chest. One more time like that, inhale, rising up. And then interlace the fingers, press the palms away from you. And if the shoulders are tight, let those elbows bend out to the side. Right? Press the sits bones into the mat, get long in the waist, and then press the palms towards the sky, keeping the shoulders down and back. We're going to take the hands all the way over to the right side. Keep pressing that left hip down, and then maybe turn the gaze over to the left. Inhale up through center and take that over to the other side. Press that right hip down and gently turn and look towards the right as we reach to the left. Come on back through center, exhale, press the palms away, chin to chest, roll the spine, belly in. And then inhale the knuckles right up to the heart, elbows out, lift the heart and drop the head. And then exhale, press away, seated cat and cow, breathing here, coming back up. And one more time like that. Let's bring the arms above the head and release the left palm down to the mat. Right arm comes up and over. Take that shoulder down, bend into the left elbow and reach the right fingers all the way over. As we inhale, we rise back up and we take that right palm down, left arm up, a little bend into that right elbow and then finding this little flow from side to side using the breath, using the inhalation, full inhalation to come up and full exhalation to come up and over. So we're moving really slow as we begin to open the side body. And the next time that the left arm reaches up towards the sky, we're gonna bring the right arm up to pause here and turn this into a twist, gently turning towards the left, right hand finds the left knee and the left fingers come behind, lengthen on an inhale and squeeze the belly and let that exhalation move you into the twist. Unwind through center, sweep the arms up and take that over to the other side. One more time in each direction. Inhaling up and exhaling over. So we're not forcing anything. We're still warming up. One more turn, looking towards that right side. Come on up through center. Bring the arms above the head. Interlace the fingers and bring the hands to the back of the head. Supporting the head, drop the head back and look up. As we exhale, drop the chin to the chest and drop those elbows towards the floor, rounding the spine. Inhale, rising up one more time. Support the head as the head drops back. And exhale, let that head come down. And pause here with the weight of the hands, just releasing the back of the neck. Next inhalation, rise up, bring the hands behind us. See if you can interlace the fingers. If not, you can grab your strap. And then we're gonna press the heels of the palms towards each other, maybe touch. Take the elbows out to the side, big breath in, and as you exhale, squeeze those elbows towards each other, right? It starts a little lift in the heart. Watch the lower back, right? We don't want to arch like we do in seated cow. We want to keep that length in the lower back and just lift the heart. Take the shoulders down and back and look up. Big breath in. Notice the breath across the chest. On the exhalation, chin to chest, start to round forward and lift those arms up. Maybe stop with the knuckles, just pressing towards the wall behind you or continue dropping the head, lifting those arms all the way up, releasing the shoulders. Inhale to rise and take those legs out in front. Give them a little shake. And take the toes up and as we exhale, press them down stepping on a gas pedal and do this a few times. Notice how the ankles showed up this morning. Then make these little circles and circle the other way. Bend the knees, standing the feet on the floor. And we're just going to take the knees over towards that right side and bring the left hand to the left hip and start to pulse that hip forward and back. And then release the left arm and reach it all the way up and let it dip and touch the mat next to 
the right hand and then that left hand comes back. And we do this a few times, like creating these big rainbows, sweeping up and over. And the next time the left hand travels towards the right, pause here. Walk the fingers really close, extend that left leg out, right? Maybe just stay here, gazing towards the right. If you want to come into a deeper stretch, press that right palm down, sweep the left arm up. Even more, lift the hips. And on an exhale, take that left bicep by the ear and reach the fingers behind you. Lifting the heart and breathing here. On the next inhale, let that left arm sweep up as we exhale, the hips come down and we take the knees up and over to the other side. Left palm down, right hand to the hip, and we gently pulse that right hip forward and back, rotating the spine. When that hip presses forward, pause here, maybe stay here, maybe extend the right leg and then sweep that right arm up. Deeper stretch, press into that left palm, lift those hips. On an exhalation, maybe take the right bicep by the ear as we reach the fingers up and back. Notice where the shoulders are. Shoulders always stay down. And as we exhale, the hips come down and that right hand comes back. From here, just turning towards the right, coming onto the knees, tabletop. Spread the fingers nice and wide and bring the knees under the hips and walk the hands out or up to release the wrists here. Maybe you want to have the wrists under the shoulders. For some of us, that's just a little too much. And then drop the belly and lift the gaze. As we exhale, tuck the toes and pull the belly in and arch like a Halloween cat. And inhale, flatten the feet. And let the belly drop and look up. Cat and cow pose. So you can add the little tuck of the toes as we press into cat. Give them a little stretch to the toes and the balls of the feet. If that doesn't work, then keep the feet flat the entire time. Let's just take two more rounds, one in each direction here. Moving through flexion and extension of the spine. Come to center and send that right leg back. Take the toes down, press the heel away, do a little rock forward and back. And then lift that leg up, point the toes towards the mat and then point the toes towards the wall behind you. See what feels better. Notice if that hip is lifted, see if you can keep those hips squared to the mat. And on an exhale, bring that knee into the chest and round the spine. And then kick back and up and look up. Do that two more times. Slow and controlled with the breath. One more time, extending that right leg up and then straighten that leg. As we exhale, bring the knee back to the mat. Take the knees nice and wide, hips to heels, downward facing dog. I'm sorry, child's pose. Just want to see if you guys were paying attention. <laughs> Let's rock back up to tabletop. Find that foundation, and this time it's the left foot that comes back, toes down, press through the heel. Little rock, forward and back, stretching out the calf muscle. And then pressing into the palms, pressing into that right foot, lift the left leg up. Toes down, press the heel away, and then toes point behind you. See which one feels better, and take that option. On an exhalation, knee comes in, we round the spine. As we inhale, we lengthen, look up, and we bend the knee and lift the heel towards the sky. And two more times like that, rounding and kicking back once more. Engaging those abs as we do that, and then extending that left leg and letting the knee come down, separating the knees. One more time, exhale to child's pose. Notice if there's a little more space for this. And then drop the elbows down to the mat and bring the hands up in prayer over the head. A little release for the shoulders. Breathing here, forehead resting on the mat. If that forehead's really far from the mat, bring a block and place a block under the forehead. And just press the palms together, walk the elbows a little further out. 
and notice the stretch in the shoulders. Then release the hands back down, press up to tabletop, tuck the toes now, downward facing dog, lift the hips. And from here, bend one knee, straighten the opposite leg. Kind of take the side to side. And you guys know if down dog isn't working for you this morning, just come to stand. That's where we're headed. Come high on the toes, bend the knees, and send the tailbone back. And then shifting the weight out of the wrists and the hands, start to lower the heels towards the mat. They may touch, they may not. And then let the head drop so the ears are kind of in line with the arms. And notice if you're judging, right? Are you judging the pose? And if you are, let that go. And instead breathe and find some way of creating ease in the posture. Look between the hands, bend the knees, and start to walk the feet up towards the hands, the hands towards the feet. Bend the knees a lot and let the belly rest. Opposite hands to elbows. Find a little ragdoll pose. Gently swaying from side to side. And then let the head go. And from here, interlace the fingers. Let's bring the hands to the back of the head like we did earlier. And allow the weight of the hands to relax the neck down, elbows pointing down. The knees are bent and we're resting the upper body on the thighs. As we inhale, bring the hands behind us, interlace the fingers at the lower back. Press the feet into the mat and start to extend the knuckles straight back. We're still resting the belly on the thighs and the chest on the knees. And as we exhale, drop the head, lift the hips, lift the arms, coming into standing yoga mudra. And as we exhale, bend the knees, take the knuckles down and back and lift the heart, coming into a modified Utkatasana with the arms behind us. Let's do that one more time. Fold forward. Keep those knees bent as much as you need to. Lift the arms, drop the head. And then drop those hips on an exhale. Press the knuckles behind. And then press the feet into the mat and begin to rise all the way up. Oh, release the arms. Let's take those wrists, give them a little shake, and then interlace the fingers and circle them in one direction and circle the other way. So we were on those hands and knees, sometimes creates a little compression. And then have your blocks close by. We're gonna place one right in the middle. I'm gonna take a nice wide stance. Turning the toes out, bringing the hands to the hips and letting the knees bend and then pressing the floor away and coming back up. And doing this a couple of times, just bending into the knees and straightening the legs. And, and notice what's happening this morning. So maybe you don't wanna bend so deep, right, early in the morning. Or maybe you're feeling really energized and you wanna take this all the way down to your edge. Next time we bend the knees, pause here, shift the weight into the heels and take those arms out to the side. Bend the elbows, take the palms towards each other. Spread those fingers wide. Spread the palms. Finding goddess pose. Turn the corners of the lips up. <laughs> right, a smile always helps in any pose. As we inhale, we lengthen into five-pointed star, radiating in five directions. As we exhale, we float back down to goddess. And do that two more times, coming up, coming back down. Inhale up, and then holding in our goddess pose just for two breaths, taking the elbows back, seeing if we could come out of the waist, and then taking the tailbone down to lengthen the lower back. Let's press the feet into the mat as we straighten the legs. Bring the arms out to the side, and then flip the palms so that they're facing the floor. And then turn them back up to the ceiling. And do that two more times, rotating the shoulders, right, thumbs down, and then in the other direction. And then release the arms, release the feet, give them a little shake, maybe grab a drink of water. Water. <laughs> and we'll move into some of our standing practices. So coming, starting right in the middle of the mat and separating our feet a little bit wider than hips width. Hands come to the hips, and we're gonna press that tailbone down, find the lengthening 
lifting the heart. And even though we're lifting the heart, the chin stays down, so the back of the neck stays nice and long. On an exhalation, start to fold forward, bend the knees as much as you need to, and reach the hands for that block. That should be right in front of the face. It may be the block is on its highest height, medium, or lowest. Take a breath, find that half lift, lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, release down, and just look through the legs at the wall behind you. Find that half lift one more time. And exhale, let everything go, let the mouth open. And then begin to bend the knees, sweep the arms out to the side as we rise up. Let the hands meet in prayer. Exhale, hands to heart. And then we're going to reverse that. Inhale, fingertips up to the sky. Turn the palms out as we exhale, forward fold, coming all the way down. Find the half lift and length, look up and exhale down. Keep that left palm on the block or the floor just underneath you. You can come to fingertips here. Find that half lift first and then sweep the right arm out to the side. And your choice here, keeping the hips squared or turning that right hip up as we reach and come into the twist. Make sure the length is in the spine. Crown of the head is reaching forward. And as we exhale, that right hand floats down, finds the block. We inhale, find the length, and sweep the left arm up to the side. Breathing here. And releasing back down. Sweep the arms out as we rise back up, hands in prayer. This time, exhale, arms out, T position. Setting ourselves up for our warrior two. Let's turn the left toes to the left side. Kick that right heel in. Bend that left knee. Press into the pinky side of the right foot. Make sure the left knee never crosses the ankle, reaching forward, reaching back, and then finding yourself right in the center of the hips. And make those adjustments. So in order to ease into our warrior two, we're going to flip the palms, straighten that left leg, hands in prayer, look up. Exhale, flow back down, and do that two more times. Big breath in. Exhale, releasing. One more time. And then holding here in our warrior two pose. Gaze over left fingertips, right fingertips reaching all the way back, opening the heart and the chest. Then inhale the arms above the head and turn the left toes towards the long end of the mat. And we're going to turn the right toes towards the right side. Let the arms come down, bend that right knee and take this to the other side. Press into the pinky side of the left foot. And check out that right knee. Reaching forward, reaching back, and then a little bit of movement as we inhale, rising. And exhale, coming down. Gaze over right fingertips this time. And two more times like that, slow and controlled with the breath. Right, where can you find a little bit of freedom in that movement? Gaze over right fingertips. And then inhale, hands come into prayer above the head, both toes turn towards that long end of the mat. As we exhale, we forward fold. We find a half lift, lengthen, look up, and come on back down. Sweep the arms out as we rise. Turn the left toes to the left, let the arms come out. Bend that left knee, one breath in warrior two. Flip that left palm towards the sky. Inhale, left arm reaches up as the right hand drops. Peaceful warrior. From peaceful warrior, come back through warrior two and set up for extended side angle. Palm to thigh or elbow to knee. Keep pressing that right hip down, coming up and over. And then moving between those two poses with the breath. Inhale, rising up to our peaceful warrior pose. Exhale, coming through to extend at side angle. And one more time like that. Coming up to peaceful and coming over to extended side angle. As we inhale, we rise. The hands come to prayer. The toes turn forward. As we exhale, the arms extend and we turn towards the right, right toes to the right, bend the right knee, warrior two on the other side. So you guys will get to start to see a pattern here one breath in warrior two, and then flip that right palm. Inhale, right arm up, left hand drops, peaceful warrior. Think of really lengthening that right side body, 
As the left hand comes down the leg, pressing into that right foot. And as we exhale, setting up for extended side angle. Do the palm on the thigh or elbow to knee, left hip presses down. One line of energy from fingertips down to that left heel. And then moving with the breath, inhaling up to peaceful. See if you can keep the hips exactly where they are. Only the upper body moves. Exhaling, extended side angle. And one more time like that, inhaling up. So flowing with the breath, letting this become moving meditation into extended side angle. Let's inhale back to center, arms come up, hands in prayer, exhale, turn the toes to the right, bend the right knee. One breath in warrior, two. Flip that right palm, one breath, peaceful warrior. Exhale, one breath, extended side angle. And then use that right hand to bring you up and straighten the left leg, bring the hands to the hips. Extend through the left fingers and let the hips reach out to the right and come back up. We're preparing for triangle pose. Lengthen here. And when you can't lengthen anymore, let that right hand find the thigh, calf, shin, block, ankle, floor, anything but that knee. And then turn that right shoulder up and back. Find this length, beautiful guys. And I see some of you have the hands up already. Finding our trikonasana, opening the heart, right? lengthening up. And then from here, taking a gentle rotation. As we exhale, the right hand sweeps down, maybe finds the left, and inhale, rising back up to triangle pose. We'll do this two more times. And then holding in our triangle, take a breath, right? Where are you gripping unnecessarily? Can you let that go? And then use that right hand to pull us up, arms out, right, left toes face forward, hands in prayer. Exhale, arms extend, and we turn to the right one last time. Bend that right knee, kick into that left heel, gaze over the right fingers, one breath, warrior two. Flip the right palm, inhale, peaceful warrior. One breath here. Exhale, coming in and over. Extended side angle. Notice if there's a little more space in the body. And then rising back up, straighten that leg, hands to hips. Turn so that the hips are facing that long arm and take the hips all the way to the left as we reach out and come back up. And the next time we extend, set up for triangle pose. Left shoulder up and back so the chest is facing forward. If the shoulders are okay with it, let that left arm reach up, fingertips to the sky. Not a lot of weight on the right hand. Big breath in, open the heart and the chest. As we exhale, sweep that left hand down. Inhale, rise back up. And two more times like that, moving with the breath. And the next time that the left fingers extend up, we hold here in a triangle pose. Beautiful. Notice if you're squeezing the eyes, clenching the jaw, can you let that go? And then using that left hand, lift yourself back up. Bring the hands to the hips and just toe heel the feet a little bit closer together. And bring one hand to the belly and one hand to the heart. And notice what's happening in the breath. Notice what's happening in the body. Okay, maybe you're feeling some heat. Maybe you can feel that heart beating under that one palm. Definitely feeling the breath flowing. Breathe deep into the belly so that the belly presses into that hand. Coming back to the present moment, this next breath. and then opening the eyes. We're gonna bring the hands to the hips and turn to the left and set ourselves up for warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. So it's a smaller stance with the legs. The hips are squared to that short end of the mat. And you might wanna start with the hands on the hips and taking that left hip back and right hip forward. And then adjust your stance so that when you bend the left knee, it never comes over the ankle. 
the leg can be almost straight. And then notice the right knee. If it's really uncomfortable like this, come up on the ball of the foot, a crescent lunge, or in Kripalu tradition, this is our warrior one. So your choice. As we inhale, we sweep the arms above the head. And then bend the elbows out to the side. Right, spread the fingers nice and wide and lift the heart. Notice the lower back, right? We wanna extend the tailbone down towards the mat, keeping a little bit of the curve out of the lower back. Lift the heart and breathe here. Feel the freedom, right, of that open heart, open chest. Keep pressing those elbows out and back. And on an exhale, let the hands come behind, straighten that front foot, foot, leg, <laughs> and interlace the fingers. Maybe walk the back foot a little closer. Square the hips one more time, and then take the palms of the hands towards each other. Let the shoulder blades come down. Lift the heart, drop the head, and press into both feet like we're trying to split the mat apart, coming into stargazer. With every inhale, lifting the heart, and with every exhale, letting the head drop back a bit. Take another deep breath here. And then as we exhale, rise back up, either bringing opposite hands to elbows or coming into a reverse prayer, supporting that lift to the heart and start to press into the left foot. Stop at tabletop here. Just feel the stretch down the back of the leg. Maybe stay here or continue to lower down. Nice flat back and maybe interlace the fingers, lift the arms up. From here, let's bring the hands down to the mat, bend both knees. Shift the hips back, child's pose, and I know we have another side. <laughs> Inhale, rock forward into table and all the way down onto the belly. Just taking a little spine strengthening pose in between. We'll start with Sphinx. Elbows under shoulders, spread the palms nice and wide. Pull the chest through the window of the arms and press the hips and the pelvis down into the mat. And then notice the neck, right? So we don't wanna crane the head back, creating that compression in the neck. Think of lengthening the entire spine and then the neck follows the curve so the gaze is down big breath in walk those toes a little further away and on an exhalation slide the palms under the shoulders come into tabletop and if it would feel good lift those hips and find downward facing dog if not, stay in table or stay a little longer in child's pose. Just bending one knee, straightening the opposite leg, taking that side to side. And then walking the feet towards the hands, hands towards the feet. We're gonna come to stand and turn the other way. A warrior, one on the other side. So this time it's the right foot forward. Left heel. 45 degrees or up on the ball of the foot. Hands on the hips first, turn the hips towards the right side of the mat. Establishing that foundation, right, we start our poses from the ground up. Breathing here. And then take a big breath in, sweep the arms as we bend into that right knee. Let the elbows come out to the side and spread those fingers wide like we're holding a big globe above the head. Lift the heart, press both feet into the mat, and then scissor the thighs towards each other as the elbows press back. Take the tailbone, press it down, nice length in the spine and breathe. As we exhale, hands come down, interlace the fingers and straighten the right leg. Take the knuckles down, shoulder blades glide towards each other down the back as we lift the heart, drop the head, stargazer. Big breath in. Exhale, let it go. And then bringing the hands to the opposite elbow and see if you can switch that, right? Whichever hand was up front, just change the switch. Might feel a little weird 
or finding reverse prayer. So just trying to come out of those habitual movements. Take that right hip back, left hip forward, lengthen up first, and as we exhale, like we're trying to split the mat apart, squeezing the feet into the mat, start to lower down. Nice flat back, maybe stay here. If you wanna come a little deeper, interlace the fingers, reach the knuckles to the wall behind you and continue lowering over that right leg as the arms lift up. And then from here, hands come to the mat, we bend the knees and we lower down. One more time, all the way onto the belly. And this time, extend the arms out in front. Tense the fingers and move the hands off the mat so it's a nice wide V with the arms. Press the feet into the mat. The feet are separated too. Press the hips and pelvis and then see if you can just lift the heart. Peel it off the mat. If you feel this in the lower back, come back down. Take a little rest here. Right, breathing here in a gentle variation of a cobra pose. As we exhale, let the head gently Drop down forehead to the mat. As we inhale, lengthen up, extending through the spine. One more time like that, lowering. And then inhale, coming up. And then bring the hands back under the shoulders and press yourself back up to tabletop. Coming into a pigeon pose, couple of options here. Right, we can take seated pigeon, crossing left ankle over right knee, if that's what the body needs. We can come from tabletop, which is a really nice option, just sliding that left knee to the left side, right leg comes out. Or we come from downward facing dog, lifting the hips. So whichever option you wanna take, set yourself up. We're gonna start with the left leg first, if you're in down dog, lifting the leg up to three-legged dog. If you are in table, extending that leg out. As we exhale, bringing that knee in towards the center and then taking it to the left side of your mat. The right leg extends. We walk the hands really close and strut nice and high. So let this be a bit of a heart opener here. If that left hip is really high off the mat, we take a block, we take a blanket. And then we walk those right toes back and breathe. Right, start with the length, big breath in, shoulders down and back. And then with every exhalation, maybe walking the hands, dropping to forearms. And then see if you can support the forehead somewhere, either on a block or stacking two fists, that space right between the eyebrows. Breathing here. And we'll hold this for a few breaths because it takes the body a while to realize it's safe here. So with every inhalation, bring your attention to the breath. With every exhalation, send your attention to that left hip. Can it release a little bit more? Can it relax a little bit more? Scan the body, make sure there's no sharp sensation, especially around the joints. Beginning to slow the practice down, slow the breath. Big breath in and exhale, let it go. One more time like that, big breath in. And as we exhale, move the palms under the shoulders, press back up to proud pigeon. I'm just gonna take that left hip and bring it down to the mat and swing that right leg up and around, coming into a twist. So left leg can stay with the knee bent or if it feels better, extend it straight. Right foot is crossed over left leg. And then from here, that right hand comes behind and we inhale, sweeping the left fingers up. And as we exhale, we gently turn the body towards the right. And then from there, either elbow to the knee. So that's not to force the body into that twist. We're just using it for support and it's the exhalation that moves the body a little deeper. Keep the chin right in the middle of the shoulders, right over the heart. As we inhale, we lengthen. As we exhale, 
we surrender into the shape of that twist. One more time like that. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale. Let it go. Let's take the palms over towards the opposite side. Drop the forehead down. Counter stretch. Come on back up. And then find tabletop or down dog or seated pigeon for the other side. So pressing up if you're taking that down dog option. Lifting the right leg. If you're in tabletop, extending that right leg back. And as we exhale, bringing the knee in towards the chest and dropping it over to the right side of the mat, extend the left toes back and set yourself up for success here, right? Supporting that right hip, walking the left toes back, taking the seated option if that's what the body needs. Start in proud pigeon up on the fingertips, shoulders down and back, lifting the heart and dropping the head. And as we exhale, soften. Walking palms out, maybe forearms. At some point, maybe resting the forehead on fists, back of the hands, or that block. Perfect option. Breathing here, big breath in. Using the breath. With every inhalation, bring your attention to the breath in the belly and the ribs. And with every exhale, bring your attention to that right hip, softening, surrendering, releasing down towards the mat. And then notice the thoughts in the mind. As we begin to slow down the practice, the mind begins to speed up. So if that's happening, come right back to the sensation of the breath and the body. Right? Just Acknowledging the fact that those thoughts came up and then sending them on their way. No judging. And then as we exhale, bringing ourselves back up, we're going to drop that right hip to the mat and swing that left leg up and over, coming into the twist. And your choice. If you want to keep that bottom knee bent, just make sure both hips are still squared on the mat or extend that leg out. And then from here, left hand comes behind pressing us up, and we inhale right arm up. As we exhale, we just turn from the base of the torso towards the left, and then hug the elbow and the knee, and start to move into the twist. Every inhale, we lengthen. Every exhale, we gently let the body release towards that left side. So never forcing anything here. Big breath in, and exhale, let it go. And one more time like that. Unwinding through center and bringing the hands to the opposite side, just letting the forehead drop, counter, twist, and then come on up. And then take the legs out, bend the knees, and bring the arms out. And we're gonna hold close to the knees first or behind the knees and find that little space where we're balancing on the sits bones. I know everybody's favorite, Navasana, the boat pose. So for this one, palms can stay down. You can hold the back of the thighs, right? And then just see if you can find that space where the toes will lift. And maybe today it's one foot at a time, right? Maybe today this just is not happening and that's okay. If you can find that space where the calves are parallel to the mat, maybe play with lifting the arms out or reaching out in front of you. And we're not staying here long at all. Right? Breathing here. As we inhale, lift up, bringing the knees a little closer. And as we exhale, see if you can just release those legs a bit. And then inhale, bringing them in. Exhale, releasing them out. One more time, smile. <laughs> Exhale out and then dropping the feet back to the mat, slowly lowering one vertebra at a time down to the mat. Moving any thing you might have, holding the hair back so that the back of the head can rest on the mat. And take the feet nice and wide. And let the knees begin to windshield wipe from side to side. Releasing any tension that we might have created in the lower back with our standing practice or with that boat pose. And the next time the knees drop over towards that 
left side, let the gaze turn to the right, extend the right arm out, palm down or palm up, and just breathe in a gentle twist. Let's inhale those knees back up and take them over to the other side. And this time switching the gaze if the head is okay with that and the neck is okay with that, looking over the left shoulder and breathing here in the twist. Let's bring the knees back up and hug the knees into the chest. As we pull the knees in, take a deep breath into the belly and notice what changed. Right, a little bit of a compression here. So as we breathe with the knees coming in, you might feel it expanding the lower back, giving a little release to that lower back. Then keep the right knee in and let the left leg extend. Pavana Mutasana, wind liberating pose. Pull that right knee up and out as we kick through the left heel. And then release the right leg, toes up towards the sky and support by holding the back of the right thigh. Make little circles with the toes, circle the other way, and then bend that knee and straighten the leg. And do that two more times. I'm gonna move into another variation of pigeon, right? Bending left knee, cross right ankle over left knee and press into that right thigh, down and out or figure four pose. Find this little rock side to side, press the lower back into the mat. Just gently releasing the hips a little bit more and maybe taking that left leg up and pulling it in as you press the right elbow away with the right knee. Press right knee away with the right elbow and breathe here. And then releasing, let's hug that left knee in, let the right leg extend. Toes are up, we're pressing through the right heel as we pull the left knee to the armpit or shoulder. Pavana Mutasana, other side. And then release that leg up straight towards the sky, hold behind the thigh, circle the toes, releasing the ankles, circle the other way. Then bend the knee and bring that knee all the way towards the shoulder and as we exhale straighten the leg and do that two more times and then bend the right knee cross that left ankle over right knee give a little press to the left thigh so right where the thigh meets the hip we're pressing down and out creating a little space and then maybe lifting the right leg bringing the hands through that little space we made and pressing left knee away with the left elbow. Soften the gaze or close the eyes. Feel the entire spine pressing into the mat. And just breathe. Let's release that down, feet flat on the floor, extend the arms alongside the body, palms down, forearms down, press the feet into the mat, lift the hips and then just Press them towards the heels, so creating a little length in the spine. And then press the lower back into the mat, press into the hands and the feet. Begin to lift the hips coming into bridge pose. Maybe staying with the palms flat or rolling onto the shoulders, interlacing the fingers, lifting those hips a little bit more. So think of pressing the hips away as they come up, pressing into both feet, and it's like we're squeezing an imaginary block between the thighs. On the next exhalation, let everything come down nice and slow. Take a big breath here and then hug those knees into the chest. And then either rolling to one side, coming up to a seat or rolling yourself up from the spine. We're gonna move into that restorative pose, I promised you guys. And it is a restorative half moon pose. So we can take our blanket and if you don't have a blanket, a big towel will work. You could even roll up your mat because we're not going to need the mat for this. And just kind of roll it up, creating a little bit of a bolster. And then we're going to take the bolster and place it long way. And then bring the body so that just under the ribs, the bolster is resting. And we're gonna come down. So Ardha Chandrasana is that move we do when the hips go to one side and the arms come up and over. This is a restorative version of this. 
and the legs are one on top of the other. If that doesn't work, you can scissor the legs so that top leg falls behind. And you can support the head in the hand or you can extend out. And if you extend out, see if it would feel good to take the opposite hand, interlacing the fingers like we do or holding on to the wrist. And then breathing here in the side stretch. Right, letting the eyes close if you're okay with that. Taking a big breath in. And as you exhale, letting gravity just pull you down. So a lot of times our lower back issues come from tightness on the side body. Those muscles are tight and they'll pull things out of alignment. So just take a few more breaths here, making any kind of movement or adjustment that you need to make to feel supported and then let the eyes close and just let it go. If the arms overhead don't work, let that top arm just rest, right? The hand can come to the bolster or just in front of the face. So restorative poses, we're moving from doing the posture to receiving the posture. And with every exhalation, just imagine the body softening. And we hold these for a little bit a little bit longer than our regular postures. So when we first come into it, it may be a little uncomfortable. And then we learn to use the breath. We let the body soften into the support of the props and finding that balance here. Slowing down the breath. Let's take three more deep breaths on this side. Big breath in, let the mouth open and sigh that exhale out. And do that one more time, really big breath in. And as we exhale, sighing it out. And then begin to bend the knees, take that top hand, press it into the mat to bring the body back up. You can just turn to the other side. I'm gonna bring my bolster to the other side of the mat, just in case you guys are watching so I don't turn my back to you. And then setting up, right? So it's the bottom ribs that are resting on the bolster. We wanna have this length on the side as we come on down. Supporting the head and the hand. Maybe the legs are straight, one foot stacked on the other. Maybe that doesn't feel good, so. You release that top leg down and take a few breaths here and then see if you can settle into resting the head on the upper arm. And if you have that bottom arm extended, maybe the top arm comes up and the hands meet. And if that doesn't work, take any of the other variations, resting that top hand on the floor in front of the face for support. Let this pose work for you. So there's no one size fits all, especially when we come to restorative. And then let the focus be on the breath. Notice how the breath moves when the body is in this side bend, this supported side bend. And with every exhalation, can you soften into the support? Can you allow any initial feelings of discomfort to melt away with that exhalation as the body begins to relax and release into the side pan? And we hold these poses for just a little bit longer. It can be a challenge for the thoughts. Right? Notice if you're planning your barbecue or your next activity. And if that's happening, bring it back to the breath. So freedom in this present moment. Freedom to just be. That authentic self. Let's take three more breaths. As we exhale, open the mouth and 
sigh it out. And do that two more times. Deep, deep breath. Sighing it out. And once more. And then using that top hand to press into the mat, bring yourself up, removing the bolster and then finding your way into a comfortable position for relaxation and Shavasana. Whatever that is for you. Right? You can do legs up the wall. A really beautiful option is if you're by a chair or even a couch to bend the knees and just support. I can't believe there's a chair here. <laughs> it's like a version of legs up the wall or legs up the wall. It releases the lower back. A gentle inversion. So taking your time, finding the space, and then letting everything go. Let's go back to the breath as it moves through the body. As we inhale, imagining a beautiful golden light. And as we exhale, allowing the body to soften into the support beneath it. Let the upper body be supported by the lower body and let the lower body gently rest into the floor. With every inhalation, imagine this beautiful light that we bring into the heart and with every exhale, sending it out to every cell in the body, our prana, our life force rides on the breath. Where would we be without this breath? And as we exhale, just imagining the body releasing a little bit more, starting with the soles of the feet and the toes, and relaxing the arches and the heels of the feet, the top of the feet and the ankles. And then imagining this relaxation as if it's traveling from the soles of the feet up the legs, relaxing ankles and calves, calves and shins, the back of the knee, the front of the knee, the thighs, the hips, the seat muscles, and the pelvis. Feeling the breath moving in the belly and relaxing the belly and noticing that ripple effect as the relaxation spreads to the side body, the lower back, the waist, the upper back, and the chest. Relaxing shoulders and shoulder blades, upper arms and elbows, forearms, wrists, hands, and all 10 fingers. And then relaxing the throat, the neck and all the muscles of the face, starting with the forehead, space between the eyebrows, eyelids, corners of the eyes, the cheeks and the space around the nostrils. Unhinge the jaw, let the back teeth separate, soften the tongue and let the face be expressionless. And just for a few moments, nowhere to go, nothing to do except breathe. One with the breath. Perfect, just the way it is. And in this moment of perfection, Reconnecting with that intention, reconnecting with that brilliance of your authentic self. Sending some gratitude to the body for the way it carried you through class and the way it continues to carry you through life. 
Remembering that self-judgment breaks your own heart, right? And to just breathe into that goodness of who you truly are. So start to deepen the breath and wiggle fingers and toes, maybe rocking the head side to side. And when you feel ready, rolling to one side, resting in a fetal position, maybe the head on the upper arm, hugging the knees into the chest, and just scanning the body and noticing the effect of the practice on the body, the thoughts, the mind, the breath. And if maybe something shifted. And then gently coming to any comfortable seat to close out the class, joining the palms at the heart. And bowing the head towards the heart, noticing if your heart has any messages for you this morning. Our body speaks to us all the time. And what is it that your heart needs from you? And then taking this peacefulness we've created and bringing it into your weekend. And celebrating. Recognizes that divine light in you. And in this space, we are one. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, guys. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. ladies. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Yes. yes.